the shine's probably already gone off it. It won't be what it was. The shine, like, there's no, you can't deny that. But it's still a big fight. But in the not too distant future, it won't be that big of a fight. It'll have just passed. Pro boxing fans here in London, it's fight week. Um, Fraser Clark against Marius Wack. Obviously, Adam Azim was supposed to be the main event. Yeah. Not happening no more. But let's talk about Fraser Clark. Um, just spoken to him. He said he's in a lot better mood than he was in a couple of months ago. Just talk to me about the journey he's been on, the sort of craziness that's gone on over the last two months. Yeah, well, over the career, over the length of his career, I'd imagine it's been quite a frustrating one. He's been, you know, a real slow burner. Really, hasn't caught fire the way we would have all hoped that it had. Uh, failed to really gather any kind of momentum. Very stop start. Uh, obviously, then there was the negative press with the whole Fabio Ward situation, Wardley situation. Um, but yeah, he's going to just put that behind him now and focus on Friday night, Marius Wack, who's by far the most experienced opponent he'll have fought. Um, Wack has seen, obviously, better days, um, but he's experienced, durable, and he should be able to take Fraser Clark the rounds that he needs in order to gain the experience uh, to move on to the next level. I think the argument at the time was if you're good enough to fight at that level, you possibly just take the opportunity. Is that is that what you would go with if, if he's good enough at that time to fight for the British title? Would you have just thrown him in there or would you do exactly the route that Boxer have gone through? Uh, look, you can argue both ways. Personally, I, I'd have took the fight, I'd, I'd have put him in with the fight, you know, because, you know, Wardley came, doesn't have an, an, an amateur background, he came through the white collar. So, yeah, he's a bit more experienced as a professional, but he's not more experienced as a boxer. Fraser is, do you know what I mean? Fraser had, I don't know, many WSB fights, so Fraser's a lot more experienced than Fabio Wardley, I, I think, in my opinion. So, um, I understand he hasn't done the rounds, I do get it, but personally, I, 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 look, anytime you get in the ring, there's an element of risk, do you know what I mean? But I, I'd, have, I'd have backed my man, I think, I think that's a fight, that I, I would fancy Fraser to win that fight. Interesting, uh, yeah, he did say, listen, I, I'm in a good place now, you know what, we had, uh, we might have had it. A talk where we our voices were quite high, but eventually we got everything sorted out. He seems in a good place. He's looking forward to this challenge. Um, I was saying to him, there's a lot of good fights out there for him at this division. Um, in regards to Sol Solomon Dakers, you've got you've got David Adelaide. You know, there's, there's a good few fair fights for him in this division. Yeah, exactly. Look, he, you know, he, he just and also I don't want to be an ageist, but the clock is ticking. You know what I mean? You're like you're not young forever, and. Uh, you know, he's already, he's, he's experienced in boxing, okay, he's just got to get the rounds and navigate the championship's distance. This is a 10-round fight, could go 10 rounds because back's experienced. And, uh, you know, then that's that box ticked. Really, then it's time to, you need to crack on now. Makes sense. Um, do you want to talk about Adam Azim? Obviously, gone through uh, a little bit of a setback, uh, another setback, actually, in regards to his career. You've been a fighter, you've been through struggles of injuries, pulling out fights, whatever else. How much of this does, plays on your on the mental side of, 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 your, of the game? Yeah, so frustrating because you're young, you're ambitious, you're impatient, you want to be up there now. Uh, you're putting the work, you're training hard, and you pick an injury up. You know, it can be heartbreaking, really frustrating. You know, and you see other people, your peers, moving on, climbing the ladder, and you're like, chomping at the bit, you want it to be you. So, uh, but look, he has got time on his side. So we talk about Fraser, he needs to move on. Adam doesn't matter he's got plenty of time he's, he's a young kid really uh, I mean he's a precocious talent and he's going to get there quickly but look at it it's a shame it's an injury but, but he, he can he can withstand that you know what I mean because age is on his side makes sense obviously behind me we've got Caroline Dubois uh, somebody that a lot of people in boxing are talking about taking the torch um, for female boxing you know, she's very talented gone on a perfect record what do you make of Caroline's professional career to date so far? Oh, it's been pretty much flawless. She's uh, she's taken. She's literally looks like she's made for the pros. She's been uh, she's been blistering. 
uh, fantastic, exciting to watch. Uh, holding her back is going to be the hard part because she's, you know, she's impressing every single time. She's got to step up, uh, step up. I think once she's absolutely capable of, of making, and, and then the thing is after that, what do you do then? <laughs> you know, then she really is knocking on the door for probably world title shots. So. You know, she's moving fast. Well, she's moving fast because she's producing the goods in the ring. It's an interesting time for, for female fighting anyway. Obviously, we've seen Katie Taylor, Chantal Cameron. We see that at the top, there's great fights to be made. Obviously, below that, uh, there, there is a bit of a, a lack in depth of fighters. But when you look at the top fighters and the top fights that have happened in the last two, three years, we've been blessed with some of the fights. Looks like Caroline could be there very, very soon, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like I say, there's the you know, Katie Taylor... Uh, Chantal Cameron, they, you know, these are the stars of today, and you know, you got Caroline, Lauren, Caris, they're you know, they're the stars of tomorrow, aren't they? But they're, they're you know, and they're moving quickly. You know, uh, you would have thought maybe Lauren and Caris being a bit older and the, the amateur pedigree, the Olympians, etc., maybe they would have gone quicker. But you know, Caroline's the one been really smashing these performances at the at the park. So she's she's moving quickly. She's gathered great momentum, and uh, like I say, she's. Uh, she looks good on, on Friday night. She'll be knocking on that door for a world title shot. I do want to quickly move away and talk about other boxing. Yesterday, there's a press conference in LA for probably the biggest fight that's going to happen this year in Terence Crawford against Errol Spence Jr. Just talk to me about that one, Matt. A lot of people are excited. A lot of people are umming and ahhing on the result. But talk to me about that fight. Well, this along with you know Fury, AJ, Fury Wilder, AJ Wilder, you know, the heavyweight mix, Usyk, Fury, whatever. Uh, outside of that, this is the most talked about fight in boxing. Um, two top, top, top pound for pound fighters. Uh, look, I think Crawford's, I make Crawford a favourite. Talking that, that, you know what I mean? But I do I do fancy Crawford. I just think it, he's a type of fighter. They're special. If you ask, they're, they're, both, they're both special, but I think he's got that extra dimension that he'll just, if it's nip and tuck and there's nothing in it, I think he's someone that can just find whatever he has to find in order to get the win. He can adjust, he can adapt, he can switch. He, you know, he, he, he's, I think he's, you could say he's the best pound for pound fighter in the world. He's certainly one of them anyway. We saw another fight a couple of weeks ago between Devin Haney and Vasily Lomachenko. I do want to ask you the question, who do you think is the main man in that division, in the lightweight division? We know that Devin Haney might be moving up, but he's still the champion. In regards to that mix, well, Javonta Davis, Shakur Stevenson, Vasily Lomachenko, Devin Haney, who's the main man for you? Shakur Stevenson. Why? I just think he's the best of them. I think, uh, I think Lomachenko was, but he's had better days, you know. Um, I mean, they're all top draw, aren't they? You know what I mean? You're like, you know, you're like a Mercedes or a BMW. You know what I mean? They're all, they're all, they're all top fighters. But I think, um, and it's preference, I guess. But I, I think Shakur Stevenson's the man, and I think he's going to be the man for the next however many years. Shakur and Javonta, that's an interesting fight. If that was to happen, so you believe that Shakur can beat Javonta? Because everyone's tipping Javonta Tang Davis to be the main man in that division. Yeah, he, again, he's one of them. He's one of them. But I think I think that uh, Shakur Stevenson is the future. I think he's the future pound for pound star. Do you like his arrogance? So he was in the ring after the Haney fight. And he's sort of just, you know, like having a having a back and forth with Haney. He's just he he uses confidence, right? When you look at him, you seem like a fighter who has no setbacks. He's just, Who's his confidence? Yeah, look, you know, Mayweather was the man for so many years, wasn't he? And, you know, who's there now? There's Pinions, Canelo, Crawford, in a way, whatever, Usyk. But I think, I think that, I think Shakur, he's kind of, he's going to step into that number one spot. And then I think once he does, he'll be there for probably five, six years. Final couple from myself. Uh, Tyson Fury is still looking for an opponent. Um, Eddie Hearn and everyone else coming out and saying he's maybe, maybe prizing himself out of a fight now. He's got to the stage where he was supposed to be fighting in April. Now we're in June. Uh, no announcement so far. What, what do you make of the situation with Tyson Fury? Is it is the Saudi money tempting? Is that the temptation, or is he, from what people are saying, Eddie Hearn is saying he's prizing himself out of a fight? Do you feel that is the case? I mean, I don't know because I don't, I don't have the inside track on the negotiations and the conversations, but 
it seems that is hard is hard work to deal with to get a deal like because you just think well they, they can't all be wrong you know and he, it, I don't know it's, it's just, you think you think Kim and Usyk is a no-brainer it was there to be made and it hasn't been made and I know frustrating a lot of talk now on Anthony and Joshua fighting Wilder before we talk about that one I do want to talk about AJ White Part two looks like it's going to happen August 12th. I think it's towards the end of negotiations yeah. right now. If that fight was to happen, do you feel like it's going to go the same way, or do you feel like there's possibility of Dillian White causing the upset? Yeah, I think Dillian could definitely win it. It's a, uh, but, but, but so could AJ. You know what I mean? It's I don't know. It's a, uh, I think there's miles on the clock for both guys, but I think there's a lot. I think there's more for AJ, and also he's. He's probably achieved more and earned more, so I think the hunger levels are, are, are have probably lessened for AJ more so than they have for Dillian, if that makes sense. Obviously, the fight that everyone's talking about, uh, and there is seems to be talks in regards to it, is the one in Saudi. AJ Wilder in December is being touted for. Exciting fight, man! Just talk, talk to me about that one. Who's that? AJ Wilder? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, look, I don't, well, if he's fighting Dillian, it might not happen. Yeah, you know what I mean? Or it will happen, and people will be even more excited because he, he'll be back with a bang. Um, two big punchers. Obviously, Wilder is the bigger puncher and more durable, I'd say. But then, you know, maybe, you know, AJ's a good finisher, and you know, maybe he's overall technically better. Certainly, textbook correct wise, better. Than, than Wilder because Wilder's a bit can be a bit all over the place but he's got I've done a couple of his face uh, his fights ringside and he's got devastating power devastating in regards to AJ being a good finisher it's been a while since we've seen AJ yeah. go through the motions and uh, and do what he know what we were accustomed to seeing AJ do knocking out opponents finishing them is he still that good finisher that we were used to yeah you say that but look you know Usyk, he never got to a position to hurt him to finish him anyway. You know, he probably struggled to get up for Franklin, truth be told. And yeah, we probably look, looked a little bit gun shy, little, looked a little bit under motivated. But, you know, he's been at this level for so long. And then you're coming down having a kind of a, a routine ish fight with, with Franklin. And it's like, he probably just couldn't find that, that level in that fight. That don't mean he won't find it when he has to. Um, you know, and then if you, I know you say you can go back to the Ruiz one. Yeah, well, he did get, he got, he got stopped by Ruiz, so he was probably going to be a bit gun shy in the second fight there, and he did what he had to do. You know what I mean? And then, you know, against Pulev, he finished him pretty good. Didn't he? That was a good finish. Obviously, for us British, you know, fans and what we are from, and if we do want AJ to come back to the old AJ, provide the nights that he's provided, which he will do. But that Tyson Fury fight, we can keep talking and talking and talking. Do you think, Matt? That, that fight will ever happen. I mean, who knows? You know, it's it's. Uh, you, it, it, I think if it doesn't happen soon, it, it'll have just passed. You know, and won't happen. You know, because you know, if one of them gets beaten, or it, it, all of a sudden the shine, the shine's probably already gone off. It it won't be what it was. The shine, like, there's no, you can't deny that. But it's still a big fight. But. In the not too distant future, it won't be that big of a fight, it'll have just passed. Matt, it's a pleasure to talk to yourself. I know um, there's a few media things that we've got to get cracking yeah. on with. Thank you very much for talking to Pro Box fans. Talk to you very soon. Yeah, Thank you. Very much.